Hi, we're back in my office again and uh, we thought we'd start out the uh, induction motor training module with a couple of simple experiments. These are things you could actually even try at home if you happen to have a meter or borrowed a meter from somebody like Ryan's tool lending library at the Energy Center. Basically these experiments are just targeted at demonstrating induction, the fundamental principle we're talking about behind induction motors. And for the first one, um, you just need a meter, you need a copper pipe, which is going to be our conductor, and you need a couple magnets. Um, these, my magnets happen to be, this is a welding magnet, that you know, is used to help things jig them up while you're welding them. This is an uh, old speaker magnet from an old set of speakers I had. Anything like that would work, the stronger the better, basically. Because um, what we're going to do, as you'll recall, basically physics says that if you move a conductor through a magnetic field, you'll generate a voltage. So we're going to demonstrate that. Um, what I've done is I've set my meter on the millivolts AC scale. Um, the reality is you could probably set it on volts, millivolts, AC or DC, and it wouldn't matter too much because we're going to generate a voltage that's not pure DC, but nor will it be 60 cycle AC. And so the number on the meter is going to be sort of meaningless other than an indication that something's going on and there is a voltage being generated. Um, so, that said, I've got the meter set on millivolts. I'm going to hook one end up to my conductor. I'm going to put my conductor through the magnets. And incidentally, you don't actually have to have magnets with a hole. This will work without. In fact, we'll look at that after I try it this way. Now I'm going to hook the other end of my leads up to the other end of my conductor. So right now I have a circuit. It goes from the meter through the conductor, which is passing through the magnets, back through the other lead to the meter. So, if this whole induction theory is right, we ought to be able to invent and generate a voltage by moving the conductor through the magnetic field. I've got another camera watching the meter so that we'll be able to you know, show you both of those things as they happen um, in case you can't really see the display here, which I suspect you can uh, at the resolution of this video. So, I'm going to pick up the, the conductor, I'm going to take the magnets, and I'm going to start moving. And you can see I'm actually generating two tenths of a millivolt from practically nothing before. There's a little bit of an indication there before probably just, you know, some meter calibration, maybe even induction from the fluorescent lights. These are contact fluorescent lights in my office. Um, the faster I move it, the higher the voltage gets. And the slower I move it, the less the voltage is. That's because the theory says that the faster you cut the magnetic lines of force, or the more magnetic lines of force you cut, the greater the voltage will be. Now, like I said, you don't have to have a magnet with a hole in it. We can take this apart and then put it outside, and then I can move it in and out of the magnetic field this way. It doesn't have the same effect as if I move it this way. Oops. <laughs> that sort of broke our circuit. Um, and it doesn't have the same effect as if I move it this way. Oops, the light went out on the meter here. Let me get that back on. So, the point of the demonstration is that moving a conductor through a magnetic field does, in fact, induce a voltage. And that's the fundamental principle behind an induction motor. Hi, we're back again for a second experiment. This time you need a little bit more specialized equipment uh, than you might have lying around, but you may have something lying around. But you need some motor. This is an old motor. Um, it's from our washing machine, actually. It has an integral tachometer. It's a variable speed horizontal axis washer. Tack broke, and you can't buy just the tack. You have to buy the motor. So I replaced it, and now I have this old motor sitting around. Um, a motor is basically just magnets and wire. So you can have conductors spinning in a magnetic field, basically. So if the whole induction theory is right, a motor can be a generator. Okay. In other words, we're used to putting power into the motor and the motor spins. Well, it's also true that if you spin the motor, you'll generate a voltage and a flow of current. So what I've done is I've hooked up some clip leads into the, into the quick connect serving the motor windings. I'm going to hook that up to my meter. So now basically I have a circuit again that goes from my meter up through the quick connect into the winding, one of the windings on the motor and then back out again to the meter. 
So if the induction theory is correct, if I spin the shaft, I should generate a motor or generate a voltage, and, and in fact we do. It, you know, significantly more than I could generate by waving the magnets over the over the over the pipe, like we did in the last experiment. Well, that's because it's spinning a lot faster. There's more iron. There's more windings being cut. But again, this just demonstrates the fundamental principle of induction. If you move a conductor through a magnetic field, it generates a flow of current and voltage. So. Just another experiment you might want to try, sort of seeing is believing. Uh, so, now we'll move forward and we'll actually talk some about the theory and how you take what you've seen here and apply it to make a three-phase motor work. And we'll be doing that with, with some slides and some graphics that I've built.